Welcome to our teaching video on healthy food for the islands. On this plate there are two traditional foods, potato and cabbage, and two refined and processed food, noodles and white rice. We want to show you what happens with refined food like this white rice that makes them not so good for you as natural unrefined food. Looking at white rice. It has become the national food for the Solomon Islands. When you look around the port at Honiara, you see pallets of white rice being loaded onto ships bound for the outer islands. In the main street of Honiara, you see bags of it being carried on the shoulder and a whole truckload of it going into a store. Here's a man taking his sack of rice home to his family in the suburbs. Yes, White rice has come to be accepted as the national food. If the rice is running low, many people say, we have no food, even though the land is fertile and is producing coconuts, pawpaw, banana and taro and many others. Why is making white rice the national food such a bad thing? It's because the outer layer of bran and germ has been removed. When we take in starch, the pancreas has the job of changing it to sugar. A big load of starch, two or three times a day, with no outer layer of bran, means a sudden overload for the pancreas and it can begin to malfunction, making a higher than normal sugar in the blood. This big intake of refined starch is possibly the main reason for the dramatic rise in sugar diabetes in the Solomon Islands. Over a prolonged period of time, this can damage the retina in the eye and make it hard for the immune system to work in fighting infection. That's when ulcers develop that won't heal, like this one on the foot. And sometimes a part of the body has to be amputated because it has gone bad, like this big toe. Dr. Shand, a New Zealand doctor who worked in the hospital in Honiara 30 years ago, said that a single case of sugar diabetes was hardly ever heard of, whereas now we hear that nearly everyone knows of a relative or a friend who has a part of their body amputated because of sugar diabetes or has died because of the disease. Let's find out why brown rice is so much better for you than white rice. Brown rice still has the outer layer of bran on it. When it comes from the growing field, each grain of rice is enclosed in a tough husk which must be removed. Underneath is the nutritious whole grain, which may be brown, reddish or even black, depending on the color of the bran layers. All rice may be eaten at this stage. The whole grain has the bran and germ which are high in vitamins, minerals, oil and essential fatty acids and have health benefits. Remove the bran and embryo and what remains is the endosperm, the white rice eaten by many cultures throughout the world. But the bran is a source of much needed roughage. Look at what this Australian company Lotus have done with rice bran. They've made it into a breakfast cereal. Listen to what is written on the packet. A great start to the day with a healthy, high-fiber combination of rice bran cereal with fresh or dried fruit. When you are constantly eating refined products, your intake of fiber goes down so far that you are likely to get constipated. That means you start to feel bloated and lacking in energy. You are not going regularly each day. To go once a day is good. A bowel motion each day helps remove harmful waste from your body. The fiber gives bulk to your digestive system and as it moves through it takes with it the harmful wastes. It also acts like a gentle broom sweeping along the inside of your gut. When it is not there the wastes tend to form clumps and these can gather and block passageways. This means that harmful wastes stay in your gut for days and when they get stuck in odd corners they can set up the environment for cancer. One of the top cooking oils in the world is taken from squeezing rice bran to make rice bran oil. 
This oil is rich in vitamin E and other nutrients, so it is wise to leave the bran on and eat the whole grain. This gives your immune system something to fight infection with. Infections are things like pneumonia in your lungs. There is a new venture just started to grow rice in the Solomons on a large scale. But what is wrong with the root crops that grow so easily? Our grannies live very healthily on them. Listen to this article from the Solomon Star, Friday, 18 of June 2010. Erica Reeve, senior public health nutritionist, made these comments following a report which linked white rice to diabetes type 2. She said, Rice is the staple diet in many homes here. Yes, white rice is eaten too much, but you don't need to go and buy brown rice. Instead, use local root vegetables for your energy needs. They are high in fiber and have more nutrients than brown rice. Ms. Reeve said that in the past Solomon Islanders relied on root vegetables like cassava, pana and taro for their energy needs. With the root vegetables they used to add a stack of green vegetables and lean protein like fish. But now white rice was commonly eaten in every home, she said. Replacing root vegetables with rice has caused significant problems. For one, the energy from rice is absorbed very quickly and this causes your body to increase blood glucose levels which sends messages to your body to gain weight. Over time, this can result in diabetes and also increases your risk of heart disease. Ms. Reeve added that it is not just white rice though, White flour products like bread, noodles and biscuits can also have this effect on the body when eaten in large amounts. In addition, these rice and flour products do not have all the vitamins and minerals that you need to be healthy. Well, this article is very clear. Our grannies were healthier eating the vegetables grown in the villages. Much of what we have said about rice can also be applied to wheat flour. Solomon Islanders like eating white bread, noodles and crackers, all of which are made from white flour. The refining process has removed the bran and wheat germ. This diagram shows a whole wheat grain. Notice what it says about each part. Bran, fibre and protein rich outer protective layer. Endosperm starchy inner core, germ, vitamins, essential fats and antioxidants. These vitamins and essential fats are what keep your immune system strong so that it can fight infections. The antioxidants are what help your body fight cancer. Sanitarium is a health food company in Australia and New Zealand and they make a breakfast cereal from whole grain wheat and wheat bran. Listen to what is on this packet. New Zealanders don't eat enough fibre in their diet. This can cause digestive discomfort and may lead to a heavy, bloated feeling and a lack of energy. Well, here Sanitarium are putting back onto the breakfast plate what the food processors took out from the wheat. And here's the wheat germ. Like the bran, it has been put in a packet and listen to what is written on the packet. It contains protein, fat, carbohydrate, natural sugar, fiber and sodium. And we are invited to sprinkle it on cereals, fruit and salads for a tasty treat. It sounds really good for us and yet it was taken off to make white flour. In the Solomon Islands this mix of bran and wheat germ is called mill run and is fed to the pigs. No wonder the pigs grow big and healthy but it is sad that the people are missing out on this natural, nutritious food and getting sick from pneumonia and sugar diabetes. It is better to eat wholemeal flour which has all the bran and wheat germ left in. Look at the difference. However, it may be hard for you to get wholemeal flour if you live in a village far from the main centre, so you should eat the root crops which contain the vitamins, minerals and fibre that you need. 
If you live in Honiara, then the Hot Bread Kitchen makes delicious wholemeal bread, but you need to be in quick because it sells out fast. If you want to make your own wholemeal bread, then the bulk shop sells wholemeal flour. Here's David enjoying a wholemeal sandwich with Solomon Island honey. Now let's look at white sugar. The same has happened. The desire to get a white product has led to nearly all the goodness being taken out. At the sugar mill, after the cane has been crushed, the juice is concentrated and treated with milk of lime, allowing a separation of impurities. Crystals of raw sugar form and a syrup comes off called molasses. They feed molasses to horses because of all the goodness it contains. The label on the back of the bottle says it is rich in sodium, potassium, iron, calcium and magnesium. That's why in many foods, like licorice for example, molasses is added for flavour and the nutrients. Then, after the raw sugar gets to the refinery, it is further treated so that another syrup comes off called treacle, which is later made into golden syrup. White sugar crystals form. Can you see what man is doing to our food? By processing it, he is dividing food that God made to strengthen and keep us healthy into its individual parts so that he can package them separately and sell them back to us and make a greater profit. We should eat the whole rice grain and the whole wheat grain and have sugar that is taken straight from the sugar cane. Here is a picture of a hand-operated sugar cane crusher in a village in Malaita. People are enjoying the syrup that has been extracted from the sugar cane. Sugar cane grows well in the Solomons, so there is no reason to eat white refined sugar that has been imported from another country. We should also avoid processed foods that contain these refined products of white flour and white sugar. White bread, crackers and noodles all contain white flour and white sugar and their nutrient value is very low. Yet it is common in the Solomons to see children being fed crackers for breakfast along with a cup of tea which also contains white sugar. Move away from man-made drinks like Coca-Cola. In a 600 ml bottle there is 64 grams of white sugar, that is 16 teaspoons and it looks like this. You wouldn't want to eat that much sugar in your drink normally but the man-made phosphoric acid that has been added to the drink is bitter and disguises the sweetness so that your tongue is tricked into thinking that it is not so sweet. It also contains caffeine which is a stimulant to make your heart beat faster. The drink has been saturated with carbon dioxide gas that tickles your tongue and throat but adds nothing of value to the drink. Instead parents should be encouraging their children to be drinking coconut water or a drink of bush lime or lemon sweetened with honey or raw sugar. Changing eating habits can be very hard and for some it can seem impossible. Change is made easier if there are strong reasons for changing. We have seen the health reasons to avoid sugar diabetes, heart disease and infections like pneumonia. Also to allow unrefined foods like vegetables and fruit to build up our bodies with vitamins and minerals. And there is another good reason, the increasing cost of the refined and processed food. There is a food crisis in the world. As oil products like petrol and diesel became more expensive, the developed nations began to use grain to make ethanol and biodiesel. In 2008 in the United States, for example, a quarter of the grain crop, 107 million tons, was used to make ethanol. That is enough food to feed 330 million people. As a result that year, the average world food price went up 75%. This chart shows the price of wheat in red and the price of rice in brown. The red minus signs are on countries that are having serious problems feeding their people. 
millions are on the point of starvation. So why should the Solomons be importing grain that will keep increasing in price when it is capable of growing high quality vegetables and fruit over most of its land? Surely this is another good reason to change what we eat. To make our point stronger, let's pick some of the main Solomon vegetables and look at their properties. A well cultivated root crop is taro. The corms are roasted, baked or boiled and the natural sugars give a sweet nutty flavour. The starch is easily digestible and grains are fine and small and often used for baby food. The leaves are a good source of vitamins A and D and contain more protein than the corms. Taro roots are high in starch and consequently are one of the highest vegetable sources of energy. They are a very good source of fibre and contain potassium and a little vitamin C and some zinc, thiamine and folate. The traditional way to cook taro are roasting on stones or baking in a ground oven. More modern ways are boiling and steaming or baking in an oven. Cabbage is another vegetable that grows well in the Solomons. Slippery cabbage is high in protein, vitamins, minerals and fibre and it is a cash crop at local markets. There are many other wonderful vegetables like cassava, kumra, pumpkin, tomato, spring onion, beans, eggplant, cucumber, beetroot and lettuce. All these have fibre, vitamins and minerals. You can eat as much of these as you like and get the energy that you need from the starch they contain and at the same time get all the healthy nutrients too. The fruits that grow well in the Solomons are pawpaw, mango, coconut, five corner, banana, watermelon, pineapple, lemon, orange, bush lime. These not only have vitamins but have natural sugar that is good for energy and fighting sickness and disease. Having a pineapple, for example, will help you get rid of a cold or flu. A third reason is shown from the Bible. We started this video with a plate of food beside a Bible. In Proverbs 23, 1-3, we read this. When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. This present generation has fallen prey to the food companies who we have seen produce highly processed food and drink. They are like the ruler in this verse. We are told to pay attention to what is in that food and drink and to exercise self-control or put a knife to your throat and say no to those foods. They have additives in them that make you want more but are not supplying you with the nutrients you need. That food is deceptive, it tricks you. In our verse, it is telling us not to crave those things. Our Lord Jesus knows when we are facing temptation to eat or drink what is not good for us, but we must call out to him for help. The Bible says he strengthens the humble. Here in Drury we have visited the Solomons many times and learned many things from you. One thing is cooking outside. Since the Christchurch earthquake, we have been warned that more are coming and we want to be ready for surviving without electricity or gas. So each of our houses now has an outside kitchen with a fireplace. Let me introduce you to Jonathan. He is one of the two Solomon Island men who have married ladies in our fellowship. He is going to demonstrate making an umu to encourage all those watching to keep the old preparation skills going and show those who have never seen one to try it out. And today I'm going to talk about um, uh, how to cook food by using stones. And I want to share this as, uh, as a word for everyone in the Solomon Islands to encourage you to continue love the way we used to to cook our food by using stones and fire and compared to the kind of uh, cooking that a lot of people are doing today using gas, electrical stuff and a lot of people today use microwave I mean, those stuff uh, 
making us sore instantly having something on the table. But the issue is, are they, are they good for us in the Solomon Islands? So I <clears throat> pray that as I share this, it will be a, a word to encourage you to continue cook in the village by using stones and enjoy it and, uh, and also have fellowship with other people. Another thing that I'm so grateful for my grandparents in the Solomon Islands in Reno Island is how they taught uh, us, uh, my brothers and sisters, to cook by umukenge, cook by stones, and we called it umukenge, depending on where you are in Reno. In, the, in Pigeon, it's, it's called motu. People refer to it as motu. And it's a wonderful way of cooking in, in the islands, the Solomon Islands. Um, for those who are not familiar with this type of cooking, with your stones, first you have to put a base, so there's uh, a lot of stones under uh, the firewood. And then after the stones, you put firewood on top. You light a fire, put the firewood on top, the wood, and then you put stones on the wood. You are heating the stones so that you can use the stones to cook your food. It's a, a wonderful way that's been passed on down uh, to us from our grandparents, from our ancestors, from our parents. And so I'm really grateful. So even when I'm in New Zealand, my family, we are living in New Zealand, I still love to cook like this. The greens on top of the chicken. Oh, mommy. Banana leaf is an excellent way of covering it. Yeah, never mind. Okay. So we just wash the wash the stone in the water, and then pop it in the water to do the pumpkin. Pumpkin. Put the lid on top. This the one is already boiling. <laughs> the stone just helps it to cook well. Okay. There is another thing from the Solomon Islands, so we are not forgetting the ones in the Solomon Islands. It's a broom, Solomon Island broom. And we use it in the Umu too, to so suit the way they have the ash or the charcoal. So we still realize we are living in the island. Okay. You ready? Okay. 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 It would be ideal if it's in the Solomon Islands, like banana, banana leaves. Uh, here we use tin foil. But banana leaves are excellent. Well, we've got some leaves from here, New Zealand one. Yes, I like tin foil. Okay, can you put tin foil on the potato? Got some tapioca as well.
So it's getting dark now, but here we are to open our umuhatu or the umukenge, and we want to get the stones out around the umuhatu or umukenge, the motu, and we'll see how our food is. <clears throat> okay. Samuel is helping. <coughs> so the first thing, we just have to do it soft first. We will use this one next time. So there you are. It's our tapioca. It's all ready. Cooked. It's a wonderful feeling. Because you're ready to eat and ready to have fellowship with your friends and visitors and other brothers and sisters who come for the meal time. Oh, praise God. Samuel, are you a bit of Emmanuel? Hello. Oh, I catch you one night to me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We had a lovely cooked meal, cooked in a way that some of you in the islands are cooking. So we want to encourage you to cook with the stones, the natural way. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. These are the words of our Lord Jesus. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away withers, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples.
Father God, we want to thank you and praise you for your provision for us, for your care, your love. Oh, Lord, thank you for Suki and Daniel and Louis and Samuel. Thank you for Ron and his family. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our church family. Lord, we want to thank you for the ones in the islands, in the Solomon Islands, from all over the islands, in the Solomon Islands. Pray that you continue to bless them. I pray, O oh Lord, that they will have a heart to continue, eat healthy, healthy in their spiritual walk with you, and healthy in their lives as well. O oh Lord, for those saints who love you, may they remain and abide in you, walk with you, and serve you with their hearts. O oh Lord, we praise you. Thank you for your provision for us every day, and thank you for the food that we have before us here. O oh Lord, you have been so wonderful to us. We praise you, our wonderful God, our Father. Bless this food and bless our fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so let's dine. Let's eat and have fellowship. In the Solomons you have village markets and a market in each main town and a big one in Honiara where you can buy your vegetables and fruit. We have built a little shop where people from a wide area can buy our produce. They can also get Christian fellowship. This is a little shop here with organic fruit and vegetables and we really serve the community here and they're very blessed that we are here and most of the vegetables that we sell here coming from somebody else who grows it but we also have our own vegetables that we sell in the shop at different times of the year we have different fruit and vegetables bananas organic means there is no spray no herbicide or no pesticides on it it's grown in a natural way how god has intended for us to vegetables to be grown. We've got fruit and over here mainly apples and oranges. They all come from New Zealand, locally grown. Grapefruits. Our potatoes and onions. But people rather pay a little bit more and know that they don't need to get sick or they don't need to visit the doctor if we just um, eat good and healthy food as God has made it intended it to be and even we encourage people to grow it themselves you know fruit and vegetables especially vegetables are very easy to grow and you have you can have your own in your own backyard you can grow the things that um, you can eat a few times a week so we need to be satisfied with less a more simple food, but knowing that is the way God has made it to be. In this box is our own vegetables. This is celery. We grow this at the moment in a plastic house, and it's uh, it does very well. And this is it's a um, a kind of a silver beet, but it's called perpetual green. It's a self-sown. So once you've got one plant. In your garden, your next year you've got lots of little plants, and it normally grows about this tall. The leaves, but because it's winter time, the leaves are a little bit smaller. But it's it tastes like spinach. It's very soft. It's very versatile. You can put it in soups and stews and cook it by itself, and it's very healthy for you. It's full of iron and vitamin C, so it's very good for us. We sell wholemeal bread. And we want to encourage people to stay away from the white loaves and um, to eat as natural as possible as uh, God has intended it to be because it's much better for us. The wholemeal bread is just our own uh, wheat. We don't. We did grow it for a little while, but at the moment we um, we get a sack of wheat and we grind it ourselves. Very fine flour. It's a, uh, it's a meal that we have important and so our bread and biscuits get um, top quality because of this good meal. These are our own free range eggs. 
we have um, the part of the farm set aside with chickens for the chickens to roam around outside so they can eat what's growing outside and they can eat the grass and the bugs and the yolk inside is very yellow and also we have some of our own duck eggs as you can see the color is a little bit different a bit more bluish and um, they have more protein and they're very good for baking okay. this parsley what we do as well this comes from another lady who's grown this and we batter for it so she gets something out of the shop like milk or eggs and then she gives her our parsley or our own her own homegrown fruit or vegetables because we really enjoy the battering sometimes we don't have something what other people have and we put a name on a cat and when their name comes on a cat we just write down how much we buy from them and then they can buy for the same amount of money things from the shop here that we have so there's no money involved but um, sharing what one another have grown in their own backyards and we're really, um, we're really happy and blessed with that because we get different kinds of vegetables and fruits given to us or bartered for that we normally wouldn't order and the customers are very pleased with that too. A big part of our shop is selling raw milk from our cows. Here a customer is helping herself to the fridge and putting her order into a cooler bag. Having our own shop not only means that we can sell our own produce but we can spend time with the customer and this is very valuable for talking about their problems and even praying with them. We have talked a lot about food, so let's digress for a few moments and hear Tavita talk about caring for our teeth. Why do we brush our teeth? Yes, Joshua. To keep them clean. Mm -hmm. And the other one? Yes, here. To keep healthy. Keep healthy, yes. Is there another reason? Yes, Melissa. That's <coughs> right, to get holes in them. We are. So here's your tooth. See your roots coming down here? This is your tooth you see here. It's called the enamel. And when you start to get a hole, it's called decay. And that will start eating away the enamel. And sometimes it can go so low, straight through the dentine to the pulp. How do we keep our teeth clean? <coughs> yes, Shoshana. We're brushing our teeth. That's one way. What's another way? Yes, Joshua. Not turn your mouth out. Yes, rinse your mouth out. What's another way? Then we can keep the food out. Yes, Ellen. Flossing. Flossing. Well done. What's another one? Last one is eat. <coughs> eat less. Sugar. The technique watch, to brush your teeth is first start with downstairs or upstairs, doesn't really matter. And we will brush in circular motions, round and round. Okay? And then we go inside, around and round. And when you come to the front teeth, put your toothbrush like this. And what can we use to? Put on our toothbrush. Yes, Lucy. Toothpaste. We can use toothpaste. What else could we use? Yes, sea David. Salt. Baking soda. Baking soda. And what's the last one? You sea smoke salt. Sea salt. Sea salt is actually very refreshing. Now we have almost come to the end of our video, and I want to leave you with a thought. Saying no to the refined and processed food is not easy, as we said before. You will need God's help, and you will need to know His Word. That's why right at the beginning I had my Bible beside this plate of food. Now, let me show you a verse. Revelation 13, verse 16. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
This calls for wisdom. Giant international corporations like Monsanto in the United States are forcing small farmers out of business by putting pressure on them to use their genetically modified seed. By 2008, 90% of the corn that was grown in the United States had Monsanto's Roundup resistant gene in it. Roundup is a herbicide also made by Monsanto for the control of weeds. Now they have modified the corn still further and actually put a herbicide in the seed so it kills the insects that try to eat it. If this continues, you can see how easy it would be for an antichrist man to control the world's food. Here, in Drury, we grow our vegetables and fruit organically. That means using no chemicals to control weeds or pests. In the villages, you are already doing that, and this is what makes your vegetables and fruit even more valuable. Encourage your youth to learn gardening. You can see how our young people are involved in gardening by the age three when you look at this short video clip. Now let me show you another verse. Revelation 12 and verse 14. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time out of the serpent's reach. Could this be pointing to village life? where they are hidden away in the bush and often up in the hills? As I have journeyed to many of your Solomon villages with others from our fellowship, I have encouraged the village elders to strengthen their agriculture and not to rely on white rice, white flour and white sugar. This will provide employment for your youth. In addition, they can learn to keep bees, make cooking and lighting oil from coconut, make soap, keep chickens for their eggs and meat, and harvest sea salt for your cooking. And they already know how to fish well. This needs leadership. Are you a parent? Then start with yourself and then teach your children. Are you an elder? Then begin with your family, then introduce the idea to the village. We hope you will appreciate that we are doing these things ourselves here. We will pray for you to be strong in these difficult days and we ask that you will also pray for us. God bless you.